Mars Nikki's trophy. So yeah. Ooh. Um, mine was uh, Powell versus Alabama. Originally, I think what I'm gonna start off with is just the story, like of how they got. There's um, March 1931. Um, nine black men. So I don't think a lot, like half of them weren't killed in men. They were really young. Um, they were later known as the Scottsboro Boys. They were accused of raping two um, young white men, women. Uh, the woman accused them of rape. One woman later retracted and claimed. And all of the defendants except for Roy, Roy Wright, who was 12, were sentenced to death in a series of one day trials. Um, the defendants were only given access to their lawyers immediately prior to the trial, leaving little or no time to plan for defense. And apparently these women decided to, they were, they were scared, they were all riding on a um, train, like they were illegally because they didn't pay. And there was a fight between um, the white men and the black men, and then the women were scared they were going to get in trouble for illegally being on the train, so they told them that, they told the sheriff they would get um, they kind of, like they, the uh, the lawyers they appointed for them were really like not really lawyers. Like one of them was a Chattanooga real estate attorney. <laughs> yeah, and though he'd never tried a criminal case and was not admitted to the Alabama bar, and was completely unfamiliar with Alabama law, but he was the only one that offered to represent them. Um, they asked, he asked for volunteers to help. Um, so a local elderly attorney, who had not tried a case in decades, offered to do whatever he could. Neither of, attorney was paid for their work, which just goes to show how much they actually did. Um, the trial lasted a total of three days for all of the nine people, so that's three per day, which is a little ridiculous. Um, the youngest one, the 12-year-old, he was the only one that didn't receive the death penalty. He received life imprisonment in an adult correctional facility without the possibility of parole, and everybody else was sentenced to death. <coughs> because the defendants were not allowed, like they had not seen their counselors at all until the day of their trial. No time for defense, they didn't even really, neither of them knew each other, the lawyers didn't know what was going on. That's probably why it didn't take very long to be convicted. But the problem with this was that, according to the 14th Amendment's due process clause, like your spo people, especially in this case, it just this is just on death trials. But if you're um, being tried for capital punishment, you have the right to a capital complaint, no matter who you are. And the issue is really that even though they were provided legal representation, it wasn't really legal representation, it was just a label. And so, when they finally got to the Supreme Court um, in 1932, uh, the court reversed the conditions, and it was a 7-2 ruling, and the ruling established the right to counsel as an immutable principle of justice that in here is the very idea of free government, which no member of the union may disregard. Um, the ruling was limited to specific circumstances of the defendants in that case, in particular the death penalty case, cases, but actually it's really important because the legal rationale for this really became like constitutional foundation for like every subsequent case extending anything having to do with having the right to counsel in America. Oh, and I made a certificate.